Hello everybody, this is Automatic Tech Tips. I'm Matt and I'm here for you, automatically. Now, today we're going to be building a test bed. If you saw the last video, which will be up probably shortly before this one, I did a preview on the parts that we're going to be using. But I'm just going to go over them real quick again. We're going to be using a FX Series 6300 processor, 6 core. We're going to be using a 500 watt EVGA power supply. This is not modular or semi-modular. We're going to be using the Radeon RX 460. This is the 4 gigabyte variant. We're also going to be using a 2 terabyte. I believe this is a Hitachi drive. Mechanical Hitachi drive. 4 gigabytes of Kingston Hyper Fury X RAM. DDR3, by the way. I'm going to be throwing in an optical drive, just because why not. And we're using the ASUS M5A97 LER 2.0 motherboard. That is an AM3 Plus socket type. And we're also going to be using the Cooler Master. Let's see, what was it? Uh, Test Bench V2. Let's begin, shall we? With everything, we have to start off with our anti-static wristbands. Because if you make it this far and you're ready to build, you don't want to fry a circuit or, I mean, you don't want to fry, you don't want to fry a component, I have to send it back and wait. That kills your, that kills your day. So, what I do is I just normally clip on the case Except I should probably do this with my right hand. Because I'm going to be working over here. You can strap these to your wrist or your ankle or anywhere else. Just as long as it's attached to you. All right, guys, when I like to start off with my projects, I like to first work with the motherboard, get everything installed there first. Just toss that down. And I like to use the motherboard box work on. Before we start off, this is where your RAM is going to go, this is where your CPU is going to sit. And this is where your graphics card is going to sit, most likely. Now, since we're making a test bed, we don't actually need the I.O. shield, so we're going to toss that back in the box. And after we get our sticker ran out. You just open up the two little hinges right here and right here on the RAM slot. Then you take the RAM and match it up to the corresponding slot because it's only going to go on one way. And keep pushing to here the click. That means it's locked in firmly. Next, CPU time. Most CPUs will come with a stock cooler, which is 
great as long as you're not over clocking. If you are, then you need to upgrade to a better CPU cooler. Now, every time you pull out said cooler, this is what it'll look like. And it'll come with a little fan for the heat sink. It comes with the instruction booklet, but who reads instructions these days? Now, this is going to be very, very important. When you get your CPU and you open it up, first thing you'll notice is that it's got a little gold corner right here. Now that's going to match up to a corner on your motherboard. In this case, it's depicted as white. You should be able to make it out. It's right here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the little lever and lift it up. And you want to be very careful with your CPU when you take it out. Make sure that none of the pins I don't know if you can see that too well. None of these pins are broken. Because if you have a broken pin, you're not going to have a good day broken or bent. Now what we do is we gently lay it on top, touch up our corners. You don't want to use any force, so if it looks like it's hovering over the socket it's not in, just lift it up and reseat it. Then we're going to take the lever, we're going to push it down, move it off to the side slightly, and lock it in. Down. Once you set it down, you don't want to really lift it back up. And once it's locked into place, and we get a solid click, and it is locked into place. CPU fan. Should be the second one. I found in my experience that it doesn't actually matter where you plug your CPU fan in as long as it's got power going to it. Give it a tiny bit of force, very, very minor, because you've got very delicate pins here that you do not want to break. Now we can toss away directions again, and right now we have our RAM installed, we have our CPU fan installed in our CPU, so 
our next step would be to move on to installing the motherboard. Just give these little pins a push. Since I'm using ATX, I'm going to fill, since I'm using a mid tower ATX, I'm going to fill up all these. Well, not all of them. I'm going to fill up most of them. placement of your standoffs is always key. You can usually find out where your standoffs are going to need to be placed when you lift up your motherboard. Now that we have our motherboard seated, maybe not quite yet. She's not going anywhere. She has become one with the case, in a manner of speaking. Now, moving on, next part is going to be our power supply. Got some screws for holding it down. Our cable for power. Now, as you can see, this is all connected directly to the power supply, which means if you're going to have a window case, you're going to have a harder time hiding all these cables. And it's not going to look as nice. Let's 
see which way am I going to insert you. I'm going to insert you fan down. So I want hot air flowing into my CPU. Now what you're going to use is you're going to use these little screws that came with it and a Phillips screwdriver. tight enough where it's not going anywhere. Some revisions I would say indefinitely for this case the placement of the screws now what we're looking for is our CPU cable which is labeled on this one thankfully now we only have a four pin connector for the CPU well we only need a four pin connector And we also need our 24 pin connector for our motherboard. Since this is a short cable, I have no choice but to run it over the CPU. actually not enough clearance on the case. Your 24 pin connector, a good push down, and we have it connected. Now we're just going to carefully seat this. Stable enough, we'll just yeah. Not too sure how I'm gonna like this thing moving around. Now we're gonna go find that PCIe cable that I tossed aside earlier when I thought this didn't have or have a need for a PCIe Express.
you're using this test bench, if you're using this test bench, if you're using this test bench, be very careful not to snap your graphics card in half or damage it in any way. Really easier said than done. Uh, these are the two cables we will not need. And if this was a semi-modular power supply, we wouldn't even have them attached. And this one's going down to here anyway. For purpose of cable management, we're gonna try and make this as neat as possible. And I'm gonna take a zip tie. Well, I'm gonna take a twist tie. Let me get these as neat as I possibly can. And there we go. That's tied off to the best of our building. Just gonna let that hang. The power and reset switch. Actually, I want to see if I can get this. Because of how long it is. Let's see if I can actually use a zip tie to get this or a twist tie. Normally for the 
power switch and the reset switch, you'd want to refer to your manual. But I think I remember the exact way that this goes in. And if I'm putting it in the wrong way, the worst thing will happen is that it just won't turn on. Now this is not a cable management friendly test bench, so I gotta do the best I can with what I get to work with. And in the future this will be upgraded to a better test bench. All right, now that we've got our optical jive inserted, we need to find some screws that are gonna fit. And since it's such a snug fit, screw in the other side. Not that I could get to it anyway. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this connector and put it into the corresponding connector on the back of the optic. I'm just going to use a zip tie for keeping this together. And the same thing is going to happen to the back.
Now I want to stress this again, this is a test bed case meant for quickly swapping out parts. So I am not really worrying about cable management, especially since there aren't any real cable management options going on for this. Now what I need to do is I need to get a few SATA cables. And then we'll be done. Alright, so luckily I had some leftover SATAs. These SATA cables are going to look really messy, and I hope they're long enough. And let's see if I can just barely get this last SATA cable to plug in. And voila, we have a test bench. Now there's only one last thing to do. Just power it on and see if it works. All right, guys. Now the next part is to see if we can get a post. If we can and it turns on, that means we put everything together rightly. If it doesn't, uh, it means back to the drawing board. And fingers crossed. Although it would help if I probably 
put the power on. Here we go. And we have a system post. We've done it. Fans are turning. All right. For all of you who don't know what a system post looks like, that is what you'll see. All right, guys, so this concludes our test bed build. For the time being, you'll see this a lot because I'm going to be doing benchmarks on various different graphics cards. And I'm actually going to be benchmarking this system to see how it performs. And this is actually a fairly cheap system. And it's pretty aesthetically pleasing for the most part except for the power supply I would definitely use something semi-modular or fully modular but that's just my preference all right guys this has been automatic tech tips and I'll see you all in the next video